Your brain is like a computer. You, were in, you, you came to this world with the hardware system of God, but then you started installing a bunch of things and Shaitan started installing a bunch of viruses. And now all you see as a reality, your reality, is because of the filter that is your programming. The construct of space-time, our perception of space-time, and how the mind creates reality. No time to waste, let's go. Many people say that the mind creates reality, but never really bother to explain how that technically goes down. I'm going to do that, inshallah. But to get to that understanding, we have to follow a certain thought process. So stick with me. The first thing to understand is the construct of space and time. The easiest concept to understand is the construct of space. That is three-dimensional height with depth and we can move in space. Okay, that's it. Now, the construct of time is more complicated. We factually don't know what the construct of time itself is. There are different theories, either time expanding, time all existing, and so on. There are a few uh, experiments in quantum mechanics, for example, the double split experiments where particles behave differently when they are observed from not observed, or when a camera is on them, yes or no, that give indications about how the construct of time actually is. But from a religious point of view, where God knows the future, it means that all time exists. Let that sink in. If it exists in the knowledge of God, that's different from an idea of God. In the knowledge of God, then it exists, but we don't have access to it, okay? And that is where we get to the important point, that is the difference between the construct of space-time and our perception of space-time, specifically time, okay? Our perception of time is linear. Okay, that is past, present, future. But we can't move in time. We can't travel in time. We can't say like, hey, I'm going to travel to yesterday. Or, oh, I just said something stupid. I'm going to go back and change it. In fact, this creates a time travel paradox. Please search for the things that I'm mentioning um, that you don't know that. Time travel paradox, okay? Now, how we experience time or where we are in time, if all time exists, like in a three-dimensional space, just like space, all time exists, but we can only live in one moment, that is the present moment. That is as if you can see everything, but don't, can't move there, okay? Now, in this case, we can't see the future, but you get the point. We are stuck to live always in the present moment that is the now and that is important to understand what is the present moment what is the now and to understand that i want you to imagine those all that in 30 years will, re will remember inshallah videotapes movies from back in the days that exist of an entire row of time frames images that when you play them it becomes a fluent movement right Every tiny frame, tiny picture, is one present moment. Okay? So when I make a move like this, it is present moment, present moment, present, 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 present. I'm always in the present. And that's where we get to what I call the point of creation. I don't know if somebody invented a better name, but this is what I invented. <laughs> point of creation. That is the present moment. The time, this tiny lapse, this millisecond frame where we can act. Act. Now, this action depends completely on the mind. Because I would not even to even be able to make this movement if I didn't remember in my brain. I would not even be able to finish my sentence if I didn't have the sentence in my brain, if my brain wasn't working. Okay. Now, to understand that, I want you to think of the op opposite case. That is, when the brain or the memory doesn't work, dementia, Alzheimer. 
Have you ever seen a person in the ultimate stages, stages of dementia? They are in a vegetative state. They can't act whatsoever. That is because the tiny lapse, that is the point of creation, the present moment, there's nothing that steers this. There's no one leading this. And that is how the mind creates reality. Now, important to understand, since we know that the mind creates reality, is what is in the mind? What reality am I creating? And to understand that, I want you to imagine that the brain is like blue sunglasses. When you put on blue sunglasses, everything you see will be blue, regardless of what it is. You see it blue. That is what the brain does. The brain is the filter between objective reality and your perception of reality. Objective reality, ob um, subjective reality, the brain is the filter in between. Now to understand how you are creating and how you are um, using the present moment, that is the point of creation, is to understand your programming. Your brain is like a computer. You, were in, you, you came to this world with the hardware system of God, but then you started installing a bunch of things and Shaitan started installing a bunch of viruses. And now all you see as a reality, your reality, is because of the filter that is your programming. So now, how can you know what filter you're using and what reality you are creating? Is to understand yourself first. You need to understand your system. And to understand your system, you have to go through introspection. Understand everything that happened from the moment you were born until now. How you behave, how you react, your feelings, whenever you are triggered. What is your reaction? Where does this come from? Until you understand exactly how you are programmed. Because the ultimate life hack to see the truth is to live in the present moment without the filter. To see objective truth for what it is. But since we are bound to this body and to this physical experience, we are bound by our brain. So we can only try to understand our brain to make our perception better. Now, the other way is, but that, that is actually like, if you, if you can't come to this point, you definitely can't come to the next point. That is to experience true, um, the truth, the absolute truth truth that is the objective reality when you don't use your brain but use your like your inner compass your intuit like your your soul but to know whether you're following your soul or your brain is a whole different like um different uh, subject so i can't go that far the thing is you are creating your reality because of the filter that is between objective reality and your reality, your brain. And now you have to choose. Am I going to create reality unconscious of how I am created it? Or am I going to create reality consciously? When you do it consciously, that is called manifesting. You are bringing your mind to a certain way of thinking that it will create your reality. That's called manifesting. But most people don't do that. They create reality from their subconscious programming. Like a slave, like a blind person in a car. The car is going somewhere. You have no idea where you're going. That's what we need to fix. But I hope that this made you understand how we are effectively creating reality because of our mindset. So yeah, the ultimate life hack is to live in the present moment without any filter, but we can't erase the filter unless we die. We can't like, so, so yeah, that's not really an option. Um, yeah, I hope this was useful. If you have any questions, then please drop them in the comment section and inshallah, I will answer. Have a nice day. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Bye.